When well, we get through with this call, I'm going to get somebody to find her number for me, <laughs> and I'm going to call her behind. Well, let me. Well, <laughs> one more thing I thought was fascinating. Um, you said that Tina Turner gave you your first makeover. She did. Wow. She said, Gladys. That's <laughs> 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 she used to come. Because we worked together all the time. I'm telling you, back then, oh, boy, show business was so much something else. Hmm. And I know you guys are too young to even know about it or understand it. But for us, it was a haven. We pulled for each other. We saw each other grow. We knew the ups and the downs of the business, but we also knew the ups and downs of each other's lives. Right. We knew who was married to who. We knew who the children were. We knew if there was something not going quite right, you know, because we talked to each other. That was our world. You know, I asked Alicia Keys about that the other day when I was talking to her. Um, you know, did they have that kind of camaraderie? You know, and they don't. Wow. But, yeah, and so she called me one day. We were at the Howard Theater. I'll never forget. I was still wearing socks. <laughs> 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 I was. She called me in there one day. She said, Gladys. <laughs> I said, what's up? She said, she said, come here. So I went in her room, and, and the, the backstage was big, just like but the snap of a finger. So it wasn't like we had no sprawly dressing rooms, you know. They were little cubby holes. And all the girls sometimes between shows, and back then we used to do like five and six, seven shows sometimes a day. So we were there all day. And we would collect in one of the other dressing rooms, and they were sitting in there. And she said, I I'm going to make you up. <laughs> I said, you are? I said, well, I don't wear makeup. You know that. She said, no, but the lights, the lights. You need to wear makeup. You need to wear makeup. And so she said, if you don't like it, you don't like it, you can take it off. And I said, oh, okay. So she made me up. Wow, that's you know? great. And, and I was married then. I, I was married then. And, and my husband came and said, anybody seen Gladys? I was sitting right there. <laughs> I, I mean, he wasn't teasing. You know, I was sitting right there. I said, I'm wow. right here. <laughs> that is funny. He said, oh, my goodness. You know, everybody started laughing. You know, but from that time on, and she taught me how to do it after that. I didn't wear it a lot. Right. But what she said made sense. And, you know, when we did this thing with Oprah, mm -hmm. this last Legends The Legends, yeah. With her, we were talking one day because we used to visit each other all the time. And then, uh, unfortunately, we grew away. Either we both got busy. And it's my first time being able to sit down and just talk to Tina in, in a long time. So we were just chatting, and I asked us, said, Tina, come on, tell me now. We know each other's history. How did you start anew? How did you break over into something else? She said, I'm going to give you one statement, and this is what you got to do. I said, because I want to know, and I'm going to come back and talk to you about it, too. She said, you got to be willing to reinvent yourself. Wow. That's said, powerful. Isn't that powerful? That's very powerful. You know, whatever, change your look, change your music, change your everything. Wow. and. That's how I, you know, I was blessed in being able to do it, you know, and that made sense to me. Wow. Now, I couldn't possibly talk to Gladys Knight without talking about the Pips, your brother yeah. Merle Bubba Knight, my young guest, the late Edward Patton. Yes. Now, you guys were together for so many years and you had the, some of the best harmonies and choreography in the business. Well, thank you. <laughs> See, I mean, honestly, come on. Now, that ultimately led, though, to an opportunity for you to sign at Motown and I understand that you didn't want to go to Motown I originally. Did not. Why not? Um, it was just too many things against the way we were and who we were. Um, we had been singing for a long time. We knew everybody at Motown. I mean, all the artists, you know, we knew Barry before there was a Motown. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he was a songwriter, you know? Right. So anyway, um, we just, I felt that if we went over there, according to the way things were structured, um, first of all, we, we had control of our own lives. We sung when we wanted to. We picked up our own money. You know, we, ma we made the decisions that we're going with this company or that company where we wanted to work. And over there, they were totally controlled by Motown. Hmm. You know, they, they, they took care of their money. Half of them didn't, I say over half of them didn't even know how much money they would make when they went out. You know, and we thought, I want to go over there, <laughs> you know, and then they had sort of like this little caste system, right. you know, and, and it dictated what kind of attention you got once you got over there. You know, I mean, the, the concentrated attention that made a difference in your career. 
Well, in spite of that, you were able to come up with your very first number one song. A That's big why hit. we went there. The Pip said, if we go there and we just do what we do and make the most of whatever they give us, we think that that's the place to go to get that national recording hit that we, we're missing. And, and we had everything else together. We just didn't have the hit. Right. And that was, I heard it through the grapevine. Yeah. Now, there's so many rumors going around about that song. I know that you released your version in 1967 and Marvin Gaye's came out in 68. But somewhere along the line, I heard that Marvin actually recorded his version first and Barry held it back. Is that true? I don't know about that. So that's not true. I don't So you that. actually recorded your version first and released it first. Well, you know who, who actually had it out Who's right that? before we did? Who was that? Creedence Clearwater. Are you serious? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I do know that they had a recording on it. Yeah. Wow. And at the time, they were over there at Motown. I had no idea. Yeah. Now, one of my well, all-time favorite Gladys Knight and the Pip songs, which actually was the song that made me your biggest fan, was If I Were Your Woman. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I fell in love with you with If I Were Your Woman. Oh, thank you so much. I mean, seriously, that's when I became the Gladys Knight fan. <laughs> but do you know I didn't want to do that song? That's what, that's what I was going to ask you. Why didn't you want to do that? When I always choose my songs from the lyric, mm -hmm. you know, and... I have to believe that lyric, and I wasn't that confident. Now, you got to understand that I've been singing with this group since I was eight years old. Right. I grew up in the industry, and because of the structure of, of the group and the, the way the industry was, I think I was a lot sheltered mm. by them. So as a woman, look at this now, as a woman individually, I didn't have that much confidence to say, you know, the dating thing. Right. I got to be able to go somewhere in my mind to identify with that. So I wasn't aggressive with men. I got married very early. So it wasn't like a dating thing that I knew. So I couldn't go nowhere and think about, hey, if I was your woman and you were my man, <laughs> you know, she ain't treating you right, but I will, you know, kind of think. Just think about the storyline of that song. <laughs> and I felt uncomfortable with it. I don't know. I would give it a shot, but I don't have nothing to draw from. So I had to make up this scenario in my mind and kind of like, like Tina was saying, go somewhere I hadn't been. Well, let me tell you, you definitely went somewhere cause, <laughs> <laughs> because that is definitely an all-time classic song. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad I made you feel something with that. <laughs> <laughs>